100 for 100 podcast where we take 100 films, 100 of them. I take 100 films that I think every new moviegoer should watch, you know, at least once in your film watching career uh, to get a taste of what you like. I rank them from 100 to 1. I accompany them with a 100 word review. And we're releasing one a day for the first 100 days of 2020. An ambitious undertaking, if I say so myself. Yesterday, we gave you classic Western. A good three hour long, three and some change hour long. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Make time for that on a Saturday night or a Sunday night, why don't you? Um, today, couldn't be any more different. <laughs> Number 42, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. 2018, joint directed by Rodney Rothman, Bob Perschietti, and Peter Ramsey. Let's get into this 100-word review. Years from now, when animators are asked why they got into the business, many of them will point to Spider-Verse as a source of inspiration. An incredible blend of CGI, of 2D, of motion blurring, and varying frame rates all combine to give this movie a comic book look and feel the film focuses on miles morales a young man imbued with the powers of spider-man theme of responsibility plays throughout as the various spiders from different dimensions come together to stop the kingpin a refreshing take on the mythos of spider-man this film will resonate with people for years to come and boy do i believe that and i sincerely believe that 18 years down from the line from this movie, a lot of people are going to say seeing Spider-Verse as a kid um, is what got them into animation. That was one of my first thoughts leaving that movie. This movie will inspire people. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, it is so much fun. So much fun to watch this movie. Uh, to see um, to see a Spider-Man that is not Peter Parker over and over and over. And over and over again. We've gotten three different Peter Parkers now. It's good that they focused on a different Spider-Man. That being the uh, half-black, half-Puerto Rican, Miles Morales. Um, casting Shami Moore to voice him was an incredible choice. An incredible choice. I can't think of anybody else I would have wanted to cast that. Um, and seeing him live that, that, that kind of dual life between African-American and Hispanic. Between... Um, you know, the, 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 the variation, the, a kid in the hood going to a, a, you know, a more preppy type school, almost like a young Fresh Prince type deals is what they present to us here. Um, seeing him struggle with 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 the coming into that sort of life and then being bit with the with the spider that, that got that broke out of the, uh, the lab, um, having to deal with the fact that his uncle is a villain, the prowler, um, Mahershala Ali and great voice cast uh, in all this, all this crashing down on this kid is one of the one of the greatest symbols of Spider-Man. More than he could handle, and then Spider-Man rising to the challenge. That's the Spider-Man's greatest greatest times when he rises to the challenge. No matter who the spider is, um, getting the spiders from different dimensions. You know, the Peter B. Parker, which isn't quite your your Spider-Man proper. I, I would say he's like next door over from Spider-Man proper. Uh, voiced by uh, oh. I want to say Jack Johnson, but that's not right. The guy from The New Girl. Um, getting a Spider-Man voice by uh, Chris Pine, which it took me way too long to get that figured out. Um, your Spider-Noir voiced by Nicolas Cage. Your Spider-Ham voiced by comedian John Mulaney. Penny Parker Spider-Man. There's so so many different great spiders that all come together to, to battle uh, Lee F. Shriver's Kingpin. People forget the Kingpin, the Spider-Man villain, before he was a Daredevil villain. Um, a lot of people credit this as the best Spider-Man movie there is. And while I'll probably put it at number two, I'm not going to fault them for putting it at number one. Uh, they use so many tricks and tactics and techniques to make it seem like each one of these comes from their own dimensions. I, I talked about the varying frame rates, something that the eye is picking up on. But the brain is realizing subconsciously when uh when Peter B. Parker is teaching him how to web sling, they are at different frame rates there because the two characters are not on the same page. When they get on the same page as far as web slinging goes, that's when they're at the same frame rate. Things like that. The thought that went into this movie. This is uh I think Sony should just mm, 
give up the uh, the Peter Parker live action Spider Man and just focus on building to a Spider Verse through animation. Give you let let the MCU play with Peter Parker in live action. Sony should just concentrate on making these films. But if you uh, if you haven't seen Spider Verse, which man, what are you doing with your life? I highly suggest you check out number forty two on our list, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. <laughs>